Welcome to Delphicon 2023. My name is Dalia Prashnikar and I'm software developer and consultant. I'm also Embarcadero MVP and book author. I wrote several books about Delphi covering memory management, multi-threaded programming and thread safety. This presentation is about Enix Horizon, the open source event bus for Delphi. Purpose of any kind of messaging pattern in an application is providing communication channel between different parts of code. In object-oriented programming, that translates to communication between object instances. Besides the simplest one-on-one -on -one communication, there are two distinct patterns for communication between object instances that allow multiple subscribers to particular message or event. First is observer pattern and second is publish subscribe pattern. The observer pattern maintains a close relationship between subjects and observers. An object called subject maintains a list of observers and when the subject state changes, it sends a message event to its observers about the change. Single subject can omit a variety of events and subscribers can subscribe to observe any particular event. Each observer holds reference to the subject and it is its responsibility to attach and detach itself from the observed subject. Subjects commonly have sh shutdown event which notifies observers they need to detach as the subject will no longer be valid. Unlike observer pattern, the publish subscribe pattern keeps a greater distance between publishers and subscribers. Publishers don't know anything about their subscribers and subscribers don't know anything about publishers. They only know which events they are interested in. In a publish subscribe pattern, an event bus serves as a mediator, a communication channel between publishers and subscribers. Both publishers and subscribers only know about event bus that is used as a communication channel between them. Enix Horizon is an event bus and its primary purpose is serving as a communication channel in a publish subscribe pattern. Since its instances are lightweight, it can also be used to implement observer pattern, where each subject will create and hold its own event bus instance. Subject's event bus instance is used for maintaining a list of its observers, and observers then hold the reference to this event bus so they can subscribe and unsubscribe from that particular subject as needed. Subjects should send TNX Horizon shutdown event during the extraction process or earlier to notify observers subscription is no longer valid. Now let's talk about TNX Horizon features. First of all, it is thread safe. All methods in bus instances are thread safe subscribing, unsubscribing, sending events. A singleton instance uh, that is given through Enix Horizon instance is also thread safe. It is constructed in class constructor and destructed in, with class destructor, so it will be alive for the whole uh, application lifetime. This event was coded simple. It is about 700 lines of code complete with comments. Simple code makes it fast and it is also easier to use as it can be more easily understood. It also makes it easier to extend if you need to adapt it for your particular use case. Any Delphi type can be used for events. This feature gives additional speed to the bus as for simple events, there is no unnecessary memory allocation involved. In event buses where events are class-based, regardless of their memory management, allocation of objects takes additional time. So this greatly improves speed for simple events, which can be simple types like uh, booleans, integer, or even strings. This event bus supports four types of event dispatching. First is synchronous on current thread. This kind of dispatch is blocking and it is also the fastest dispatch method as it directly calls the event handler. Next is asynchronous dispatch on the background thread. Bus also supports both synchronous and asynchronous dispatch of event on the main thread using tthread synchronize or tthread queue methods. One of the most important features is weightable subscription. 
that allows to wait for any already dispatched events to complete running, and this will avoid concurrency issues during cleanup process. Such behavior can be achieved from the outside code, but it is much simpler and cleaner when it is a built-in feature. And last but not the least feature is its speed. Simple code is not always necessarily faster, but the less code there is to run, the faster it can be. When we talk about speed, I need to mention Enix Horizon implementation depends on T-Task and T-Thread queue for asynchronous event dispatching. In back pressure scenarios with fast producers and slow consumers, asynchronous dispatch can hit its limits. This needs to be considered when using this or any other event bus that uses T-Task or T-Thread queue for asynchronous event dispatching. If you experience issues with asynchronous dispatch with high-frequency publishers, then synchronous dispatch will be a better option. However, synchronous dispatch can slow down the bus as processing events will be blocking calls. Let's take a quick look at the Enix Horizon code. First, we have a declaration for a generic event handler, which is used for processing events dispatched by the bus. All handlers must satisfy this signature. Generics allows us to pass exact event type to each handler, and that simplifies code in handlers. We also have specialized TNX event method, which is used for storing event handler in subscription. And during event dispatching, such stored method will be typecasted to the appropriate type. This is internal type and it is not part of the public API. Then we have declaration for four delivery types. Synchronous on current thread, asynchronous on background thread, synchronous on main thread, and asynchronous on main thread. Synchronous event dispatching are blocking calls, meaning post or send method will not return until all synchronously dispatched events are processed. Because processing of synchronous dispatched events are block blocking calls, such dispatching should be used sparingly on default bus instance. Also, event handlers for processing those events should run fast. For any kind of events that require longer processing, you should use asynchronous dispatching. Then we have event subscription interface that is returned when subscribing. Having a reference counted subscription makes memory management easier, and we can always count on that subscription is either nil or a valid object instance. Even though subscription is an interface, it will only have one implementing class and the purpose of the interface is solely for memory management. Interfaces exposes public API for the subscription that can be used for handling subscriptions. Cancel method is for canceling subscription. After subscription is being canceled, it will no longer receive events. Subscriptions are automatically cancelled while un unsubscribing. You don't have to explicitly call cancel, it is useful only if you need to stop dispatching events early in the cleanup process long before you unsubscribe from the bus. Once you cancel the subscription, you cannot restore it again. You need to create a new subscription. Begin work, end work and wait for methods are part of the waitable subscription feature. Wait for is a blocking call and it will not return until all pending events are processed. Wait for will automatically cancel a subscription to prevent dispatching of additional events and prolonged waiting times. Begin work and end work are used internally in the bus implementation and commonly you don't have to use those. However, if your event handlers call asynchronous code with completion handlers, you can use begin work and end work method pair to signal to the subscription that event handler is performing some work that requires waiting during the cleanup process. Implementing class for event subscription also holds some additional functionality that is not exposed to public API and is used internally in the event boss code for dispatching events. And here is the Enix Horizon, our event bus class. It is rather a lightweight, holding only, only a lock and a subscription dictionary. Subscribe method requires specifying event type, delivery method and event handler, and it will return subscription interface, 
that is then used for unsubscribing from an event bus. There are several, several methods for unsubscribing. Unsubscribe method performs synchronous unsubscribing and it should never be called from synchronously dispatched event handlers as this will cause problems while looping through subscriptions. If you need to unsubscribe from such event handler, you should use unsubscribe async method. Before unsubscribing, wait and unsubscribe and wait and unsubscribe async, also wait for all dispatched events to the subscription to be fully processed, so you can safely perform any cleanup after calling them. Those methods are also nil safe which makes them suitable for destructors as we don't have to additionally check whether subscription is initialized before the call. And then there are send and post methods used by publishers for dispatching events to subscribers. Post only has an event as a parameter and events will be dispatched according to the subscription delivery options. Send method can be used when you need to override subscription delivery option and to avoid threading issues, if subscription expects events on the main thread, send will honor that requirement. Then we have shutdown event type and then X Horizon interface and its implementing class. Inex Horizon exposes wrapped event bus instance and can be used to add automatic memory management for event bus instances that have shorter lifetime than the application for instance when implementing observer pattern. When wrapped pass instance is no longer needed, you need to call shutdown method that will send shutdown event to all subscribers. This is a signal to subscribers they need to perf perform appropriate cleanup as the subject they are observing is no longer available. Reference counting ensures that container object instance is valid during the cleanup process in multi-threaded scenarios. We need such container class because event bus relies on parameterized methods that are not supported for interfaces, so TNX Horizon class itself cannot be interface based. And then we have static NX Horizon class that exposes default thread safe bus singleton instance. There are also two methods for asynchronous unsubscribing of wrapped event buses, which will ensure lifetime of both past event bus and the subscription during asynchronous unsubscribing. And at last, there is a generic ENX event interface and its implementing class, but those are just helper types. You don't have to use them as events can be of any Delphi type. This just helps to declare event types that use pre-existing classes with manual memory management so we can more easily use them as events without having to consider their memory management. And now let me show you some demo. I have a small VCL application where I will use a memo as an output. First I will declare two event types that will be used for, our for sending our events. One will be string type and another will be integer type. So here it goes our ttext event type. It is a string type. And the next is data event which will, which will be integer type. You will notice I have wrote type string and type integer uh, to allow compiler to generate specific type information for those events so they can be distinguished from other regular string or integer types. And now we can write our first publisher which will happen on a text button click. I will just emit some pre predefined text to default NX Horizon bus in instance. I will use a post method to use original dispatching declared in the subscription. So events will be dispatched according to the subscription requirements. And here is our ttext event and I will write some text to be sent. You can pass no regular string or to such, to such event you don't have to use predefined text. And another publisher, 
is timer event, which will send our tData event, which will count number of times timer has been triggered. So here we, we are posting tData event with timer count field. And of course we will increment that field each time the timer is called. So those are our first two publishers. Now we can subscribe our form to those events. Before that we will have to define two fields for holding our subscription data so we can unsubscribe later on in form destroy. We have to keep separate subscription for each event type we are subscribing to. And now let's subscribe to our event text event on the same event bus instance as that will emit events. This is our default event bus. So we are subscribing to the text event and we will use main dispatching on the main thread asynchronously because uh, in the event handler we will uh, write uh, received event in the memo so we are interacting with the UI and we want to do this on the main thread but before we can subscribe we need to also write event handler for that event event handler is of course by part of the subscriber and now we can complete our subscription let's make data event handler too and in those handlers and in those handlers we will output uh, past data to the memo okay here i have to typecast events back to integer because helper to string doesn't know which type is a event it doesn't recognize our data event but usually you don't have to do this and with string we can just write string to the memo without any typecasting. Okay, so we have our two event handlers. Those are based, uh, those are for our subscription. Now let's write data subscription. Uh, this uh, data event will be emitted only by timer, so we can call, use synchronous dispatching because it will all happen on the main thread. We don't have to worry about background threads in this situation, so we can just use the fastest synchronous dispatch for the data event. Of course, if we have another, uh, if we if we if we have another. Uh, publisher that will emit such events from the background threads, then we would need to synchronize the event handler with the main thread in order to use the UI. And let's write unsubscribing from our events in form destroy method. We need to unsubscribe to prevent crashes and this event dispatching after the form is closed. So basic unsubscribe method is just unsubscribe and we pass the subscription and uh, it will be unsubscribed from the bus but uh, in case of uh, asynchronously dispatched events we don't want to just merely unsubscribe because uh, this is a form uh, we are form is in the process of destruction and we have to wait for any uh, asynchronously dispatched events to process finishing, to f finish uh, their processing, because if we don't wait, we can crash the application. So I will use here wait and unsubscribe. This will prevent any such uh, problems. With data subscription, we don't have to wait for it because it is happening on a timer event which happens in the main form on the, on the main thread, but it doesn't hurt to you, you call wait and unsubscribe here either. And now let's write our background thread code. 
I will use anonymous thread to launch a thread on each button click so we can start multiple threads and at the same time. So first I will send an event to let the, uh, let the subscribers know that the thread has started. I will use just ttext event for this notification. We will also count thread threads so we can see which thread posted which event. To simulate some work I will use sleep so we can see events happening more slowly. It is not important that we do any particular work in this thread. And now there is a loop where something, some work will be done. We will again simulate, simulate the work with a slip. And we'll send, we'll send a new text event on each loop iteration. And at last, there is a thread finished notification. So we know that the thread has finished its work. And now we can run application and see what is happening. So we see the timer events number and now we can start threads, multiple threads if we want. We can send a text with clicking a button, start another thread and all notifications are written in the order they happen. Now, this is just a simple demo, but it is clear from the code that there is no direct link between subscribers and publishers. The only thing they have in common are event type declaration and use of default event bus singleton as communication channel. So both uh, subscribers and publishers can sit in their own units and don't have to know about each other. In more complex scenarios, we can easily have other event bus instances that can serve as dedicated communication channels for specific functionality or event categories. We can also use event bus for implementing observer pattern. In such scenarios, we should use ENX Horizon interface and implementing event bus container class to make sure that we can successfully manage subscribing and unsubscribing in multi-threaded scenarios, where bus instance could otherwise be destroyed with its owner while there are still live subscribers subscribed to the bus. When it comes to use cases for event bus, only the sky is the limit. You can use it anywhere you wish. Uh, for communicating between background threads and UI, for communicating between UI components, or to communicate between multiple threads. You can use event bus to achieve the coupling between publishers and subscriber, where the only thing they will have in common are event types and event bus instance. That way you can have more manageable code with clean separation between different parts as they will not directly depend on each other. For more information you can go to dalia.prashnikar.info and now we can move to live question and answering part. That was an excellent session, and I've actually been um, starring some of the conversations. Looks like we've got our live chat working, and we've got some questions for Dahlia as well, which is excellent, because Dahlia joins us live right now. Hello, Hi. Dahlia. How are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. I've seen you uh, answering some of the questions as we went along, uh, which is good. Great session. Um, as ever, you've always got these um, these marvelous sort of tips about really quite complicated, well, not complicated, um, intricate engineering. I think that's what, what I mean. Engineering um, of software rather than just writing code, but actually the engineering, the nuts and bolts that goes behind it, which is, um, I think, really one of the, the strengths of, of what you do. So um, would you like some questions? Let's um, go through. OK. Um, Sky buck flying who actually has been a kind of frequent flyer in the questions um you i think you answered this already but he said uh, he or she said uh, so is this about http and, and i noticed that i thought hey <laughs> did you not really no. on the screen <laughs> uh all good names are reserved i guess 
Yeah, I, I, the answer is no, it's nothing to do with HTTP. It's all, all about threads and answers and, and things like that. And um, Lars um, Fosdal, who is a very good um, developer, I, I've come across Lars a couple of times before, uh, he said, I must wish I um, had the NX Horizon years ago. It would have simplified things a lot um, with regards to inter-thread communication. So it's not really a question, but he's basically just saying, Good job, you know that it's a, it's a, a worthwhile uh, project, which is good. Um, and then um, Starbuck flying said, "Oh, so it must be about multi-threading." Yes, indeed, it is about yes. multi-threading. And uh, well, it, also, it, can al it can also be used in single-threaded applications. It is not just for multi-threading. Uh, it is right. of course thread if so, it can be used uh, in multi for multi-threading. This is the problem that it solves because uh, for now there is no built-in uh, thread safety messaging system in Delphi. Uh, default uh, uh, code in system messaging is not thread safe, or at least right. it wasn't the last time when I looked at it. Uh, uh, no, so uh, it can. So it can be used, to, its primary purpose is for multi-threading, and this is why I am emphasizing the speed, and uh, it, because it has, has to run fast in such scenarios. But uh, you can also use it in single-threaded applications. Uh, its main purpose is to decouple code between publishers and subscribers. Uh, for instance, uh, Ray Konopka was talking about uh, the, uh, about actions. So when you have a, an action, uh, all code, when you run that action, all code that reacts uh, to that action has to know everything about uh, the action and action must know about the code that will run. But uh, you can upgrade this with uh, messaging uh, and event bus. And uh, when you trigger action through some real action, Delphi action, uh, you can then dispatch a message with the uh, event bus and you have totally decoupled code from the user interface and some business logic that will receive the message that it has to do something and that will react on uh, that action. So you don't have to couple code together. You can uh, have completely separated units. Only thing they have in common are event types and the uh, bus instance they will use as communication between those uh, two parts of code. So nothing, yeah. uh, nothing connected. Yeah, and, uh, and actually, main... yeah, and uh, yes. this kind of thing you go about in your your various books actually, um, which is why I put your website down there, dahlia.prashnikar.info. Uh, and if you go there, uh, Dahlia's books are there. There's a nice plug for you, Dahlia. Uh, I, you can send me the uh, the checks later. <laughs> um, but go to go to Dahlia's website. Um, Dahlia's got some really excellent books about um, memory management and um, event-based uh, and asynchronous um, uh, patterns. Yeah, and, and then, uh, Delphi uh, thread safety patterns. Well, actually, uh, this. Uh, this code, uh, this bu event bus, uh, I wrote about it in Delphi Threat Safety Patterns, and it was used as a demo there. Uh, I recently upgraded uh, with some additional features uh, code on GitHub, so there are some new features that were not there in the book. But uh, if anyone wants to see how you create and how to... Uh, engineer some code, how to think about it, what you, what you need to do. Uh, I think that is a good example of that in the book. Because yeah. you start with your, start with what you need and then make the simplest code that works, that satisfies the, those needs. And it is, at the end, it is very, it can be very simple. Something that, uh, usually sounds complicated uh, at the end is 700 lines of code it is even less in the f original code without comments it's about 500 lines so very simple code very easy to understand and this is its strength i think yeah and and there's 
I think two chapters that, that, that cover that as well. Isn't there a whole chapter that talks about the event bus, and then you have another chapter that comes, yes, yes. talks about the implementation of it? Yeah, it's it's a great book. I mean, uh, we've got some really good authors, and um, but you're one of my favourites. I've mentioned before, uh, Holger's got some really good books. Thank and, you. In fact, uh, most of the, most of the recent books have been absolutely excellent. Uh, and obviously, Marco's got the standard for uh, the Delphi language, but. I think the Thread Safety Patterns book in particular, I, I really found very interesting. I think by the time I'd read that book, I was terrified that everything was broken and every piece of code I'd ever written was awful. Uh, it was quite funny, really. But uh, but you you do cover some things that I, I honestly never would have thought about until I read your book and thought, you know, I'm amazed at how you look through things and thought about them. It's extremely impressive. I know a lot of good uh, developers, but, you know, when you read um, the books by people like yourself, uh, I think you get to understand those developers a lot more, and, and uh, it's quite impressive. So, if people haven't looked at it before, and I, uh, by the way, there's no link here between Dali and myself. We're both MVPs, but she's not paid me to promote her book. Uh, uh, at least I don't think she has. Uh, but uh, there's no, no link. I'm just saying, as another developer, as a Delphi developer and an MVP, they're great books and they're worth looking at. And, and there are others as well. Um, Patrick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, Patrick runs a Delphi Books site as well, which we'll probably promote later. That's got some other good ones on there as well. Um, okay, so how are we doing with time? Let me just check my little schedule here because we've moved things around a bit. Uh, oh, we're doing good. Um, Martha says she's back as well. Okay, I think those are all the kind of starred questions. Um, most of them were really saying about, um, you know, what happens uh, with the event bus, and I think you covered those in your answer just now um, about multi-threading. Uh, someone saying they did write their own multi-threading classes and helpers, um, but they're going to check out your event bus, which is a good thing as well. It is, um, uh, I'm not quite sure what this question is here. Let me just um, make it appear on the system here. Um, is it downloadable on your website? Well, um, it is available on GitHub. Okay, it's on GitHub, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, link is in at the beginning. It, I will post it. On okay. Fine. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we um, we can get to that. Like a lot of these things. Uh, what other questions? Because we now have the question and answer working, which is great. Um, very multi core processors. Um, so I don't think this is really relevant specifically to what you're doing, but they're saying, um, let me just pull it up. Uh, very important docket for future of Delphi with these multi core processors. Um, good to see the Embarcadero is on top of it. Well, um, you know, if you've written apps in the past, it didn't really matter. Um, well, well, you we don't have to wait for Embarcadero to do it. <laughs> threads and threads. Yes. And, you know, well, you could uh, do threading since the beginning, uh, very yeah, early so. days, but nobody was doing it because it yeah. was too simple to use application process messages to keep your application responsive, and we all used well, it. Well, it pretended it was responsive, and then it would just suddenly stop and crash. And like, oh, yeah. why is that not printing? Yeah, I mean, um, when you're doing a lot of UI stuff and you want a responsive UI, you really start to have to, have to get into threads and things like that because, um, you know, retrieving data and freezing the whole of your user interface while you're getting the latest updates uh, uh, would drive most people crazy, I think, as well. What about error control, says uh, one person here. Uh, Diego, what happens if a subscriber fails? Well, they shouldn't fail. <laughs> There's your answer, Diego. They shouldn't fail. So. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, the only thing uh, you can uh, subscribe, if you try to subscribe an event and there is not enough memory, that will fail, but that will be caught in your own code and you can handle that. But if uh, I, I, I don't remember now whether I had some uh, exception handling, but I don't think so because uh, uh, during the uh, event processing, uh, that is happening uh, mostly in background threads. And if it, even if it is not happening in background, th background threads, it is happening in event handlers that are completely 
detached from the uh, event bus code. So uh, in theory, uh, you should uh, capture and handle all, all exceptions in your uh, event handler code uh, because bus doesn't know how to deal with them. Yeah. And uh, adding some exception handling uh, on the whole bus level would only slow down the whole bus. So uh, this is something that should be done uh, from event handlers where you can react to some exception when you know what the kind of exception you are getting, why you are getting it, and uh, then you can handle it. A uh, bus uh, has nothing to do with it, and putting exception, exception handling there would not solve anything. You would not be wiser about any exceptions that happen there, and it would just slow down the whole bus. Yeah. This is not really a question, but this, hat, this is going to confuse a lot of people. Someone says, nice cowboy hat. And now, <laughs> they, they have not gone to your site. They're going to know, wonder what it is. So... Let's just not tell, explain it. Let them go to your website and uh, and they can work it out for themselves afterwards. <laughs> I think that's a good uh, teaser to get them there. Um, one person uh, also says uh, Starbuck, uh, Skybuck Flying, who's uh, actually said lots of questions. I don't think we've uh, offered him a, a bribe to do it or her. Um, as, uh, multi-threading is one thing, but doing it efficiently is, is the uh, second step. Oh. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, in multi-threading, doing it uh, efficiently is important, but uh, thread safety is the number one prior priority. Because if you have uh, concurrency issues, then the whole thing falls apart. And uh, so it is better to do it slower and uh, prevent some errors uh, that way than being extra fast and... Uh, uh, not uh, do it uh, correctly. But yes, you, you have to learn how to do it efficiently too because uh, there are other problems if you don't do it right. Yeah. and um, so Some people many... try to lock everything and then find themselves in trouble. Uh, I saw I code where people would spawn another thread and then they would basically lock the whole thing uh, synchronizing it with uh, some uh, with main thread or uh, lock will uh, run uh, extremely long and basically they would uh, have the sp same speed or they would even block the main thread uh, so through that code so you have to find the balance yeah and, and um, yeah I think I think that's the key thing as well is 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 efficiency is almost as important as, as multi threading it, it, you know if if you're not doing it efficiently then you lose all the benefit of multi threading especially if you have to synchronize and block all the all the threads you've just basically lost the benefit of yes. of multi threading um this is a question I'm not sure if you've got an answer to that what uh this is didier uh, what brings the what what does the nx horizon framework bring compared to the delphi native messaging uh, well, first, first of all, it is thread safe, and uh, native messaging T message is not thread safe. Uh, I said uh, last time I checked it. Uh, I am not sure if there were some changes in the meantime. Uh, the next thing is uh, T message allows uh, uh, messaging is done through objects, so event uh, events are classical objects and uh, you have to handle their memory management. So that is also, uh, can also be a problem with speed because you, first you have to allocate that object. Then you have a problem with uh, releasing that uh, message in asynchronous uh, uh, dispatching when you are uh, communicating uh, uh, with background threads because you don't know when you, you can safely uh, release the T message if you are uh, if you have multiple subscribers, uh, you don't know when each subscriber has uh, is done with the pro message processing. So yeah. this is uh, another thing. And uh, the next thing uh, it's it uses uh, any De Delphi type as event, so you can use uh, bytes, uh, integers, strings, records, uh, value types as uh, events 
and uh, this can be very fast. So if you need to uh, send some boolean that flag that will say something happened, you can just say send a boolean or a byte, and this is very fast. You don't have to allocate memory for uh, some message and then release it and everything else. So any, any Delphi type can be used. And of course, if you want to send some more complicated uh, objects or classes, you, the best is if you use interfaces because the, their memory is uh, automatically managed. So every subscriber will have its own copy, its own reference. So they will not interfere with each other's memory and with threat safety, of course. Yeah. Um, Lars uh, Fostal says, what happens if your published data has no subscriber? Uh, is there a limit to the life? No, of nothing, nothing. <laughs> it will just run a loop, try to find whether there are some subscriber, and if there is none, uh, nothing will happen. It, it will not dispatch it to anything. But this is where the... Again, memory management is important because the, uh, you should use automatically managed uh, types or va value types. And in that case, you don't have a problem with handling any memory. If you send a byte, you don't have to manage its memory. If you send a reference to some interface, again, you don't have to take care about. Yeah. And, uh, and whilst we're, we're talking, I just want to mention Glenn uh, in the background, Glenn Dufke, who is one of the MVPs, he's Danish MVP, and uh, he, he's answering a lot of the questions as well on some of the streams. So he's saying lots of good things about you as well, Dahlia. So uh, I don't know whether you can see his chat, but uh, well done, Glenn, for answering those questions. Um, and this one is an interesting question, uh, and I think that's probably a, um, one that you can answer the best. Uh, yes, of course. I'm, I'm writing another one <laughs> about, yes, I, I I'll just say something. It's about uh, testing and, uh, but uh, not just the testing part of uh, software development process, but all other parts that are necessary for uh, successful uh, development and successful testing and su successful uh, deployment. So that is very is interesting. I, I must speak to you offline about this because um, there is an idea a company called TestRail, and uh, I think there might be a little bit of a crossover there between what you're writing about and uh, their product. So uh, let's let's have a chat later about that. I think um, someone I don't know whether there's an answer to this, but someone says. What does the acronym NX stand for? Well, uh, I had a library that uh, has X as a name because I, naming is hard. So I... <laughs> naming is <things laughs> hard. <laughs> it was just TX when I was writing my types. And uh, uh, then I had to upgrade this library, but I had to maintain the old classes in parallel because it was a gradual upgrade. So I added N as new next or Excellent. something like and, that. Uh, and someone here saying in uh, Mexican Spanish, uh, hello from Mexico. So uh, hello, uh, Mexico. Everybody gets around here. And, uh, and Glenn said, <laughs> Glenn, you're very funny. I, I should, we test in production. That's what he says. Yeah. I, then Glenn's an MVP, and I don't believe that for one moment. But uh, I actually did have a conversation with a customer earlier on who's just said they're going to test something in production. Uh, I wait their phone call with uh, interest when it all goes horribly wrong. Uh, okay. So um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you uh, kind of want to bring to our attention that uh, we we didn't really cover during the questions or during the session? Well, not really. Um, I have one thing. I had uh, one request uh, on GitHub uh, asking whether uh, NX Horizon works with DLLs. And it doesn't. It works with BPLs, uh, Delphi packages, because they're share, they share uh, uh, RTTI information. And uh, with DLL, you don't have uh, 
RTTI information that is used in a bus. Uh, this is the mechanism which allows it uh, to send bytes, integer strings to mix everything. The, this is why generics are used. And uh, uh, this code could be adapted rather easily, I think. Uh, I, I cannot say whether there will be some difficulties in some areas up front. Uh, to use uh, to use it with DLLs and with COM, with ActiveX and uh, similar, but uh, it would be completely new code. Uh, subscriptions, uh, event types should be interface-based in such type. Uh, everything should be interface-based and uh, GUID should be used as a subscription type, uh, not type information. Uh, in that case, uh, this could be used uh, as uh, messaging, uh, as event bus for uh, communicating with DLLs and other uh, com objects. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't do anything like that because I, I started to write this to cover my own needs and I'm not doing much com <laughs> development. So this is... Uh, and. If I would write something like uh, this to work with COM, it would have to be a completely different bus because uh, the features required for COM would interfere with uh, this one. So it would interfere with speed. It, it would interfere with uh, uh, simplicity of sending messages. But yes, it can be probably rather easily converted to separate library that can be used for those particular needs if someone needs to run something like that. Yeah. Um, we've run out of time. <laughs> uh, and weirdly enough, the next session is mine. So I could, uh, it's already recorded. So I could just say, oh, we'll move it along a bit. But actually, it's, it's, uh, when I first recorded it, it was 59 minutes and 59 seconds. How stupid is that? So, but um, uh, we, there were a couple of people asking about where they could download things and where connect. Uh, they could connect with you. Well, that's, there is a link on my website, and I posted. I can post it again. Yeah, link I've to actually the GitHub. The link, the link GitHub Dalia P. So it should be. Uh, let me just get that up when I can see it here. Um, I've actually put a post to Dalia's website as well. I don't see it in that chat, but we'll. We'll make sure that um, we, we get it connected uh, up. Oh, let's just see. Yeah, no, I don't see that chat, but that's fine. We'll, we'll sort that out. Okay. Um, well, go to Dahlia's website and um, look at her books. And uh, she's a very smart person. And uh, it's always uh, good to be on streams with her. She knows an awful lot. And every time I, I watch some of her presentations, I learn something every time. So uh, well done, Dahlia. Uh, I, I thought I'd got to the age where there's not an awful lot left to learn in life apart from uh, when to stop talking. That is not true. <laughs> that is never true. Yeah, exactly. I know. I got there. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot.